This is The Nervous Tissue by Nima, Gulia, Alex, and Elizabeth. In this screencast, we will be talking about nervous tissue. Now, nervous tissue makes up the nervous system. And before we get to um, talk about the nervous tissue, we're going to talk a little bit about the nervous system. Now, the nervous system is divided into two groups. We have the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Now, the central nervous system is composed of the brain and the spinal cord. And the peripheral nervous system is composed of the nerves. And it's what connects the central nervous system to all the other body parts. Now, the main job of the nervous system revolves around sending and receiving electrochemical messages so that our body can function both to physical and chemical changes. As mentioned before, the main job of the nervous system revolves around sending and receiving electrochemical messages. This, these messages allow our bodies to work properly. They allow us to work our sensory, integrative, and motor functions. Our sensory functions allow us to see, touch, and smell. Our motor functions involve our body parts working together so that we can function as a whole. Our integrative functions allow us to pay attention, allow us to learn, and maintain consciousness. So now that we've talked a little bit about the nervous system, we're going to move on to the neural tissue. Now, the nervous system is composed of connective tissue and blood vessels. However, it's mainly composed of neural tissue. Now, this neural tissue is made up of two different cell types. Those different cell types are neurons and neuroglial cells. As previously said, there are two types of neural cells. There are neurons and there are neuroglia. Neurons are specialized to react to specific physical and or chemical changes and they react in that they transmit nerve impulses and these nerve impulses are transmitted through the dendrites which are then sent to the cell body and lastly to the axon. And neuroglia are also known as glial cells and they are star-shaped supportive and connective cells. Neurons are capable of sensing changes in their surroundings, and when they sense these changes, they respond to this by transmitting nerve impulses along cellular processes to other neurons, muscles, and glands. As I was explaining before, dendrites, which are projections, um, receive the stimulus and they bring it to the cell body which is then sent through to the axon and then into the gland or organ that it is being sent to. And the anatomy of a neuron goes like, as I said before, with the cell body, dendrites, and an axon. The cell body, which is right here, consists of a cytoplasm, mitochondria, lysosomes, Golgi apparatus, and microtubules. And these are organelles that are important and vital for the functioning of a neural cell. And then the dendrites, which are right here, um, they provide receptive service, um, surfaces to which processes from other neurons can communicate. And as I said before, they're thorn-like spines for contact points for other neurons. So other neurons can connect to these and send other impulses. And the axon, which is right here, is um, a little elevated from the cell body and there can only be one axon unlike the dendrites there are a couple of dendrites over here but there can only be one axon and they conduct nerve impulses away from the body we need neurons for many reasons specifically they coordinate regulate and inter integrate many body functions for us and they also carry impulses into the brain and or spinal cord and when they do this it is called they are called afferent neurons and efferent neurons are also called motor neurons they carry impulses from the brain and or spinal cord 
to other muscles and glands. And lastly, connecting neurons um, carry impulses from one to another, so from neuron to neuron. Neuralgia cells play an important role in helping maintain the neuron. These cells support and bind the components of nervous tissue, carry on phagocytosis, and help supply nutrients to neurons by connecting them to blood vessels. They also play a role in cell-to-cell -cell communication. The myelin set is a protective covering. This covering allows impulses to travel at higher speeds. This protective covering covers part of the spinal cord, the white matter of the brain, and most peripheral nerves. In the brain, there's white matter and gray matter. The white matter is protected by the malin seat. Um, the gray matter is not, not covered, and it does not need impulses to travel fast. That's why only the white matter is protected. Alrighty, so now we're going to talk about neurotransmitters, and neurotransmitters are basically chemical substances that either inhibit or make it possible for nerve impulses to be transmitted across the synapse. And chemical substances are pretty much the method of communication a nerve cell uses to communicate with another nerve cell, or they're the method of communication from one nerve cell to, let's say, a muscle. Now, the body produces at least 30 different kinds of neurotransmitters. However, um, I'm just going to mention a few. And a few of these neurotransmitters include endorphins, dopamine, serotonin, acetylcholine, and they're probably neurotransmitters you've already heard of. And, for example, acetylcholine is used for muscle action, dopamine is used for mood, endorphin is used to release pain, and serotonin is uh, used for the roles of sleep, hunger, and pleasure. And in this picture, this is what you would call a neurotransmitter. Right here. A synapse is part of the neuron that transports the impulses from cell to cell. It's what stimulates the neurotransmitter to travel through the axon. It all starts from the presynaptic neuron. This releases the neurotransmitter. The presynaptic neuron is located near the bottom of the axon. Then after the synapse sends this message through the axon, it is sent through the synaptic transmission. Meaning, the neurotransmitter is sent to the synaptic knob in the synaptic vesicle and it is released into the synaptic cleft. Once it is sent through the other cell or muscle, it receives it in the postsynaptic neuron, which is located near the top of the neuron, but after the cell body. In this picture, the neurotransmitter doesn't necessarily have to travel all the way to the bottom. In the middle of the axon, it may have more synaptic knobs at the terminals. There are also many diseases regarding the nervous tissue. Two of the most common diseases are multiple sclerosis and Alzheimer's disease. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disorder that is characterized by a lot of demyelinated nerve fibers in the brain and spinal cord. And demyelination is just the loss of the protective myelin sheath covering. And Alzheimer's disease is an idiopathic disease characterized with severe dementia. And the nerve cells, also known as the neurons, are destroyed because of old age. And when these neurons are destroyed, it means that the chemical messages, which are the neurotransmitters, are not being synthesized or sent. So because of this, areas of the brain that normally work together become disconnected, and this slowly stops normal functioning of the brain. For the treatment of multiple sclerosis, there really isn't a cure. Measures can be taken to lessen symptoms like medications, but nothing can really stop the multiple sclerosis from progressing. And physical therapy and planned exercise programs can help lower the 
symptoms of multiple sclerosis. As for Alzheimer's disease, there also is no cure for that. The goals of treating Alzheimer's are to slow the progression of the disease itself by promoting hobbies and managing the person's behavioral problems and to also modify that person's home environment if not put into an assisted living facility for safety and for comfort.